Welcome back, Dark. Welcome back, Zero K fans. I didn't record Dark Souls 3 this morning. What am I thinking? And we're back with an exhibition stream between Adam and Rar and my apparent lack of sleep. But I do have tea. I've always got my tea. Anyhow, it's on Ravaged, so great map and two pretty good players. Well, I mean, Adam too is a very is a very good player. Rar is a good player, although, I mean, Rar does play. For those not familiar, Rar is very keen on playing their commanders, which I've generally considered to be of a handicap of theirs. Like, I feel like they are playing with an arm tie behind their back, trying to do that. But it's good that they're experimenting, trying to figure out how it works. I don't know if they're still going for that now, because their other big thing was gunship. This game, though, they're going pretty straight. Shields and the commander does not seem to be being used too quickly, obviously constructing stuff, but it is an economy commander, so they're probably not going to be attacking too much with it. So I think we're going to see them playing a bit more normally, while Adam going for shield bot as well, early dirtbag, which is shield bot mirror on Ravaged, wow. I'm surprised mostly because Ravaged is one of those maps that supports pretty much every factory evenly. And then both players are doing a mirror match. Like, I find that a bit surprising. At any rate, this this is a little unusual, I gotta say. Although it looks like both players are playing normally. I mean, this is a pretty standard start. Adam going for the dirtbags for her scouting. Rar going for more direct aggression, trying to harass out very quickly. And unfortunately, this one bandit here ahead of his two compatriots looks like they're not being used for harassment, though. This one being used to stake out the eastern side. Very good choice there. And the other one was going for the main base, but I think they're just being used to stake out. Yeah, staking out the center. Very good strategy to do. You'll see a lot of times high-level players will just stake out positions because they want to know when those positions are being used. Because you can just spread out units like that. It's not a big deal. If you want to know when your opponent's expanding to an area that's pretty common for them to expand to, stick a unit there. When the unit dies, that's usually the canary in the coal mine. And that'll tell you, oh, they're expanding there. They have an extra however many metal or whatever they're building. Usually it's just for metal. But yeah, they have, in this case, they have an extra six or so metal. That's, there you know, there you go. Now you know about that. Although, I'm a bit surprised Rar didn't stake this position out sooner, but they are staking it out. That's a good one to stake out. This is a good one to stake out. The one over to the west as well, oftentimes players will actually go across. So, it kind of depends. The east and west center expansions, I've seen players expand along from the north players, expand along the north side, just over here, and then up. And, like, usually up here and then around the back and then through here. And, of course, it makes a lot of sense for the players down here to expand up through here because it's a shorter path. But I've seen both happen. I've seen... And that goes, obviously, for the eastern side as well. The southern player taking the eastern side through the back. Or sometimes even going straight up through here, down, up this ramp, and then up this ramp. But at this point, neither player has really taken that. And Rar... Much more suspicious of Adam 2 trying to take the Eastern Expansion, not suspecting Adam 2 is going to take the Western Expansion, but Adam 2 is trying to clear that out. They actually are going, setting up to clear out the Eastern Expansion, so it looks like Rar is probably right. Oh, and also Freely's pointing out that the other nice thing about staking out units is that you know that your opponent is just taking that expansion, so it's going to be relatively undefended, and you could punish them for that. That's another good point, because radar on this map, because of all the cliffs, it's difficult for radar to work well. I mean, it works fairly well. I think they're underestimating it a little bit. But yeah, it's a bit harder, because, like, look at the radar here. There's this big shadow here because of the plateau, and there's another shadow down here. You need to have a bit more radar than usual. So yeah, I can definitely see what they mean. But I think in general, staking out expansions is a good idea, because radar, it's good, but it's not easy to put on front enough lines that you can see what your opponent is doing inside their base. So having staked out units like that, especially early on before your opponent has set up, that is always useful. So yeah, in general, as a general tip, early on in the game, send out raiders, one to each expansion you think your opponent is likely to go to. Then at least, at the very, very least, they have to deal with it. They can't just expand there blindly. And that'll slow them down. And you also know when they're expanding. Because now Adam is actually expanding to the eastern expansion and staking out the western one. 
And the stakeout over in the north. Actually, this is going to be super profitable because these two ban- These two- not bandits. These two convicts are going to have to move back. The bandits coming in here. I mean, that bandit's going to be able to take care of both of them. I think they might be able to set- No! Oh, they will actually- Yeah, Adam 2 has got enough. There's enough build power there. They could set up a Lotus in time if- No! Rar, Go under the shields! No! That's going to do nothing! There we go. Finally going under the shields. Still took a bit too long. So yeah, the Lotus will be able to stop this. One of the convicts? No, not even one down. Ah. That's the thing about convicts. You have to be very careful. You have to get under the shields. If you're not under the shields, it doesn't work. However, Rar setting up, yeah, I noticed Adam 2 has got so much stored metal that there's nothing stopping them from rapidly building a Lotus. That's only nine seconds. That's enough time to get rid of one of the convicts for the bandits. If the bandit goes under the shields. Possibly both. Not entirely sure. Actually, I can verify that. Let's see. Bandits are... Bandits deal 95 damage per second, and convicts have 100, oh, 650 health. Okay, so yeah, that's definitely enough to kill one convict, not both. It would take about 7 seconds to kill one convict. By that point, the Lotus is about, well, 80% done. And now you have another convict that now needs to take 4 seconds to build it. So both convicts will die, and then the bandit will die to the Lotus. That's how it'll go. However, killing both convicts is huge. One Lotus and two, I, well, two dead convicts. That's a great thing. And at this point, surprisingly, Adam 2 not expanding, not building up the metal extractors, which means that Rar's harassment was still effective. I mean, not really harassment, but the effect is the same. If you killed both convicts, then the player has to send in more builders. That's the whole point. You want to kill builders first because that slows them down loads. But at this point, Adam's not building with these, surprisingly. They didn't disconnect, did they? Nope, they're still there. So yeah, Adam not building with these convicts, which means Rar's not really being punished too much for not having killed them. That being said, though, Adam's still ahead economically. Like, it's not like this is nothing. It's just, I'm a bit surprised that Adam isn't trying to win more. Whereas, Rar at this point, I mean, Adam is sending, okay, Adam didn't, did need more energy, that's true, but there's no reason not to get the metal extractors. At any rate, RAR is clearing out the... Oh no, not going to clear out the Western Expansion. Are they going to manage to? I don't know. Sheesh, this is so close. It looks like Adam 2 will have to be push, pushed back, but RAR has to advance into that bandit, so... I don't even know. And RAR is going for commander upgrades. They actually have been level 4 now and upgrading again. So they're still going for commander heavy. Drone and... Drone speed and a bunch of beams. That's an interesting way to go about it. I don't know if I totally agree with it, but yeah, that works. And however, Roach is over to the north, so Rar's got to be careful about that. And Adam 2 now finally taking that northern expansion. But Rar, I mean, they could send a builder over to the western expansion and deal with that. Like, they sent one over to the west, set up a lotus so that the other bandit is guaranteed to not kill them. That could work. But at this point... I don't think Rar is going to go for that. In fact, Rar needs a caretaker or another convict or something at home to build up more units. At this point, they're starting to fall back. I mean, fall behind, I should say. Adam 2 is... They have the rogues, so that the thugs are kind of nullified, as are the outlaws. There's no bandits coming in from Adam. It's all... Oh, there's a few bandits, but mostly racketeers, thugs. Looks like Adam's trying to just set up to break the shield ball and then either harass around the side or smash through it once it's stunned out. And once the outlaws are dead. But yeah, so the Rocketeers will come in, that'll take care of the shields, that's going to be a problem. And now, at least Rar will be able to take the Western Expansion, but are there convicts? There's no convicts coming over here, that's the thing. And the, the Shieldbot Factory for Rar is not being, not being used for production. I mean, the Commander is upgrading again. At this point, more speed, more armor, another drone. I have three drones so far, actually. Two battle drones and one companion drone. And the super powerful beam laser. That helps, too. Sheesh, that is... That's a lot there. Okay, it looks like this is going to be... At least these comics are going to die finally. But at the same time, the bandits can't really hold on to that western expansion anymore. So this is still a bit of a problem for RAR. And the center's gone for RAR, too. They just lost the whole center. So right now, Rar's falling behind economically. I mean, they have their commander. This is kind of all or nothing. 
Gonna be upgrading the commander again. But yeah, the Racketeer should be able to stun that out pretty soon. Like one or two more shots, and that's it. Yeah, there it goes. Rar's commander about to be stunned out. And thank I mean, the drones are taking the hits, but still not enough. Rar's basically relying on the commander and its entourage to pound through Adam's base. Just get rid of the production, basically. That's the only thing they can really do effectively. Get rid of all that production. Maybe damage the economy a bit. But really, that's the only real killing blow they could potentially have, is get rid of the shield bot factory. And at this point, Rar building up more forces, trying to take that western expansion, but only trying to get rid of whatever Adam might have. Not actually trying to build it for themselves. They don't have any convicts over there. And Adam, too, on the other hand, they've taken the eastern side. They defended it pretty heavily. Defended the center as well. There's a lot to grind through for Rar trying to go through the center. They Going instead, trying to take care of this southern lower or the northern lower expansion, that's not going to be the most effective. I mean, Adam's just bearing down, and then Rar at this point basically has no firepower here. The commander's been stunned out. They pretty much just have everything else taken fire for them so far, but the commander's going to be hit directly very soon. And the Racketeers causing too many problems. Bandits might save the day, but I kind of doubt it. They are getting torn to shreds. Basically giving their lives to try to keep Rar's Commander alive, but I don't think Rar's Commander is going to last. It's got nothing. It's dead. And at this point, neither does Rar have anything. It's basically done. Rar's Commander's down. That's pretty much it. At this point, Adam has such a large army compared to Rar. All the territory in the map. Rar never even took that western expansion. The center belongs to Adam... I think Rar's going to try to see if there's any angle to push in on, but there isn't. Not without a huge army, not without a comparable army, getting rid of Rar's forces, I'm sorry, getting rid of Adam's forces, and Rar's commander was kind of that army, except for the Racketeers killing it. So yeah, that ended rather abruptly. I mean, Rar went for the commander thing, but at that point, they were already behind economically, and hadn't really done a huge amount of harassment, and hadn't been expanding enough. Scott thinking, I guess I got thinking t that they needed that commander going. And unfortunately they didn't. Wow, excess. 2,500 and 1,200. Hmm. Oh well. But yeah, that was all commander. That was all commander. And unfortunately it didn't really work out because Adam just ended up getting the economic advantage and the commander wasn't able to get rid of Adam's army. I think maybe if it had gone, f I mean... Maybe the commander had gone for D-Gun or gone for some other special one well, single-use special weapon for crowd control. That might have worked better. Or even Lightning Gun, because that would have gotten through the shields much faster. But yeah, that beam laser was really infrequently firing. But yeah, of course, the Racketeer is always the Racketeer. That's always the problem. Once the Racketeer comes up, you're just dead because the Racketeers are anti-heavy. That's what they do. And even if you put on shields, that doesn't help, because the shields get hit harder, because all the Racketeer damage... Like, Racketeers... What is the paralysis damage? I think it's 1,500? Yeah. 1,500 damage. That's all paralysis. So, if something has 1,500 health, that's in it's one shot, and it gets paralyzed or disarmed. The shields, however, take a third damage directly of that, so, the shields go down by 500 every time they get hit. And then, of course, other stuff's hitting those shields as well, because that commander's in combat. So, it doesn't really help that much. But anyway, that was that. I'm not sure what to say about that. I mean, really, it just was a matter of economic advantage. Like, Adam just got the economic advantage, and Rar never really took it back. And then... Rar went for a Hail Mary throw. Like, they went for this commander push that they hoped for the best on and didn't manage to get anything with, sadly. Oh well. Haven't seen the particle beam though before. That was interesting. What did Adam have? Lazarus device, beam laser, and build power increase. Hmm. Pretty typical for support comm. Alright, well that is going to be it for me tonight. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching and have a good night everyone.